Join me on a tour of Corel Painter's menu commands. Let's start with the file menu. New, open, and recent. Close the image. Open template if you have one. Place allows you to open any image as a layer on your current image. I'm going to skip Quick Clone and Clone because we're going to have a project very soon that will give you a deep understanding of these commands. Save, of course, allows you to overwrite the previous version of the image, whereas Save As will give you an opportunity to give the current image a new name and any file format you wish, and your previous image or the original will remain intact. Iterative save is very special. Let me demonstrate that. If you want to save stages in your painting and don't want to bother with dialog boxes and names and typing and other kinds of things that will get in the way of your workflow, you use iterative save. Let's begin by calling this demo painting and put it on the desktop. So I'll save that. Then I will open a custom palette just so I have quick access to lots of choices here so I can go and make a number of changes. And I'm going to put the iterative save command in my custom palette. That will make it ever so much easier for me to use that command rather than going up to the file menu or using the three buttons on the keyboard. So going then to the custom palette add command, I will make sure to add it to my X3 Scribbler custom palette, then go to the file menu, choose iterative save, you'll see it appear here, and then when I click OK, it becomes an item on my current custom palette. So making some more strokes here, and I'll switch to the color set so I can just click on any number of possibilities here. Let's make some dry ink strokes. Let's use the coarse wet bristle. And then when I click iterative save, notice that the title of the painting becomes demo painting 001. Every time I make another stroke or a set of strokes that I want to save, I will simply click on that and we see that there is now another version of it called Demo Painting 002. So it's as simple as that to save stages in your work. Going back to the file menu, Get Info is a way for you to write in information about your project, anything at all about the brushes you used or the techniques, the effects and whatnot, and then you can retrieve that information whenever you wish with the Get Info command. Acquire allows you to open up an Illustrator file from anywhere on your hard drive, and I will go to the Working Files and Chapter 3 and coffee.eps. EPS is encapsulated postscript. It has appeared now for me to examine. I will zoom in a little bit. And what I notice when I open my Layers palette is that Coffee EPS has become a special kind of layer that is a collection of shapes that are grouped. Even a simple graphic like this has a number of shapes. Let's see if we can simply select the shapes. This particular shape is one of the steamy lines that's coming up from the hot coffee. And as you can see, it is a vector shape. You can use the shape selection tool to actually move the anchor points and handles around and make any changes that you wish. I will dismiss this item and not save it. When you finish working on your EPS file, you can export it as a vector image. And finally, page setup and print, you know about those things. Let's look at the edit menu. Undo and redo can be extremely handy, and you've got 32 levels of undo or redo by default. Command or Control Z is the handy keyboard shortcut for undo, Command and Control Y for redo. Let me demonstrate the fade effect for you. If I make a stroke, and let that be the stroke, 
or if I use an effect, I can fade it by any percentage that I choose, which is kind of the equivalent of a partial undo. So at about 50%, when I click OK, I now see that I have faded that particular brush stroke, the last stroke or the last action that I did on my image. Let's save it once again. So now it's the third version. Fill is quite similar to what you get when you use the paint bucket, except that you also have an opacity capability here, which is not available when you use the paint bucket. Transform will require that you have a selection or a layer on which to operate your transform, but you've seen those transform effects before. You can scale, you can rotate, skew, distort, or use a perspective distortion. Let's make a selection just so we can have some fun here. And then with the transform tool, we can scale by whatever percentage. Let's make it 50. And we can rotate. Let's also commit the transformation. And then go to the flip horizontal command and the flip vertical command. So that is acting not on the entire image, but only on that layer or selection. I'm going to undo those last several steps so we can get back to the previous version and move over to the canvas menu. Resize pretty clearly lets you make your image larger or smaller with or without constraining file size. I'll cancel that. Canvas size lets you add to the edges of the image with pixels at any or all of the edges. And let's see what Rotate Canvas does. Rotate Canvas lets you flip the entire image horizontally or vertically and lets you make these few or any arbitrary amount based on your entry in the angle field. But I much prefer, when I'm working anyway, to use the Rotate Page tool, which you've seen allows you to move the image into any angle that you like for ease of drawing or painting. And double click to bring that back. I won't look at surface lighting because there are many other ways of creating lighting effects, but I will use the Hide Impasto. Notice what happened there. The Impasto stroke that I had used which is this one, now brings back the impasto effect that was in that earlier stroke. Not only can you hide or show impasto, but you can eliminate the impasto depth altogether. There may be times when you want to do that. I will actually undo that now. Set paper color means that at any point in your work, you can change the paper color. Paper color is defined by Painter as whatever the eraser reveals. So I'm going to choose a color, let's say this peachy pink. And when I use the set paper color command, nothing happens until I do a select all and a delete. And now I see my blank image with the new paper color. And just to show you that, in fact, it will erase to the paper color, I'll choose, well, I'll choose the eraser tool right here in the toolbox, and that is definitely happening. Interesting impasto effect there as well. You can show rulers at the upper edge and the left edge of your image for whatever purpose, and you don't have to use inches as I do. You can go to your ruler options and use a more sensible unit of measure. Composition can be helped by the divine proportion, which requires that you also open another panel in the window menu. The divine proportion panel will allow you to make the divine proportion effect in any size and any orientation. And basically, this is a way for you to determine where to place the focal point in your image so that it corresponds to the time-honored proportions that have been developed over the centuries, actually. You can show the layout grid. And when you open the layout grid, it's grouped here with divine proportion. You can determine how many divisions should be laid out. And you can turn these things on or off as you need them for a number of purposes 
perhaps having to do with drawing based on making a copy of another image. Guides will help you determine where to place items. Similarly, a grid. Perspective guides are new in Painter X3, and you'll need to use the Perspective Guides tool in the toolbox, which, notice, shares a space with the Divine Proportion and the Layout Grid. So with Perspective Guides then available, just want to zoom out so you can see these lines and Notice that you can change them to any position or angle in order to accommodate your project. Annotations refers actually simply to color notes, and everything down here has to do with color as well, color management for pre-press or commercial printing. We'll continue examining the rest of the menu commands in the next movie.